Welcome back to the Vaudcast. I'm Dr. Greg Eckel. I'm Dr. Greg Knight. And we've got a timely discussion. This will be our fifth discussion on this topic. Uh, wow. It seems like every year it rolls around and the marketing machine is, uh, is a rolling. Yeah, every year we got to do the same talk. This year, 2010, the marketing machine is not in such a hysteric pitch right. as last year. It's getting, it's, yeah, it's not quite the same, but it's a, sort of a different emphasis this year. Little yeah. different emphasis. Uh, we've got a little bit more sanity, maybe? Sanity? I don't know if I'd call uh, it that. It all seems insane to me. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, uh, can you guess what topic we're talking about? We're talking, it's flu season, coming up on flu season here in the U.S., and um, we always have fun with this topic. Even back to 2005, we did our first podcast on the avian flu at that point, That's right. uh, and avian the hysteria flu. of bird flu. Now we're that. in the post-pandemic swine flu era, uh, <laughs> which is uh, 2010. And um, yeah, post-pandemic, uh, just yeah. one word about pandemic, which we commented on about last year, but I wanted to bring to light this year because you're gonna be you're gonna be pressured on getting that flu shot this Already. year. I mean, there's a there's an enormous uh, you know this public health campaign going on about vaccination this year, and it's um, a certain aspect of it. It's not using as much of the fear as just the the sort right. of necessity and right. I'm not sure it's not playing on the fear thing about H1M1 but it's just this this drive that everyone now needs to get of this. course we've just had our first pandemic in 40 years right uh, who knows when the next one will hit and right. of course you get your flu vaccine that's I mean step one in public health policy in the US get the vaccine get the vaccine in fact, well, let's. I just want to say on the pandemic discussion, uh, last year, World Health Organization changed the definition of pandemic the first time ever that they've changed the definition. Um, Thomas Jefferson out of the Cochrane Library, great reviewer, great institution, uh, worldwide um, scientist, uh, looking at research, actually commented about it, I think, well, in one article that I've seen them written up on, uh -huh. um, talking about last year where they, you know, on May 1st, they had uh, the true definition of pandemic, which was, um, you know, virus that spreads very quickly, a lot of people get sick, and it's serious complications. Those three aspects. On May 4th, the new definition in which we're now living in the post-pandemic era of is a virus that spreads very rapidly. Uh, it doesn't take into account severity of the deaths and right. uh, any any infectious agent that spreads rapidly in a population. Right. By definition, now is a pandemic. Is a pandemic. Even if it causes, even if it just causes people to get happy. Right. It's still. It can a be. A it doesn't matter what the pandemic of happiness would be. It doesn't matter what it does right. to the people, but if it spreads rapidly, it's a pandemic. Right. So that in just going in knowing we've changed the rules, we've moved the goalposts, as Dr. Nye, I think, said right. last year. So anytime that there is a media talk about a pandemic, keep in mind that it doesn't mean that there's something spreading that's causing a lot of people to get sick. This is not the 1918 Spanish right. flu. That's okay. what everybody gets harkened back into the fear mind of that was a significant pandemic, right, right. right where a lot of people died. Um, we're not belittling the flu and uh, flu-like illness uh, at all. And, you know, you'll see, we'll get serious here in a little bit, maybe. Uh, yeah. But it's a, a topic, you know, so just starting on pandemic. And then you look at what is, what's going on this year. You know, we read in the newspaper, where was that Philadelphia you had read? Yeah, a hospital uh, in Philadelphia. I think, I'm pretty sure it was in Philadelphia where they told the work the employees of the hospital that they have to get the flu vaccination if they refuse to get it they are sent home two weeks without pay <laughs> to think about it think to think about it yeah and they then come back to work and if they still decide not to get it they're they're fired <laughs> they it's a, it's a free country America is a free country <laughs> yeah you can really you have freedom of choice here and yeah. uh, and you can yeah. decide what goes into your body and how you care for your immune system. So uh, it's a lovely commentary of where we are right now in the world and what's going on as far as the, the dogma out there. And, and then to think about what, you know, we were just talking before 
before the show here. Um, so they're pushing this vaccination on healthcare workers. And of course, the Cochrane Review right. looked at, well, do they actually work? What evidence do we have that these vaccinations actually work? And what what you came up with is right. actually very telling. It's very, yeah, right. They're uh, paraphrasing here, of course. Uh, there's very thin scientific data to support that the flu vaccine or influenza vaccine has any evidence of working. There is a lot of um what was it? A lot of information showing that the the data has been manipulated very well yeah. for uh, pharmaceutical outcome or the the likelihood. They showed, you know, it went into big detail. You can find this online. I'm not making it up. Uh, big detail into the pharmaceutically based research studies, which were over half of them. There's about only 45 studies, which you would think the way that this gets purported. Uh, or reported on is that there's so there's loads of evidence that this works um, and th really when you look at the research and this is what we were saying last year on the H1N1 because that was a new one but this is of all flu vaccine um, that there's very little evidence to support it the uh, the studies that the pharmaceutical industry actually performed and paid for actually had higher placement in the more reputable journals so that where they're talking about this manipulation of data for uh, maybe ec they didn't say economic outcome right. but I'm saying economic outcome um, I mean you know you look at it and that's we've reported on that the fallacy of the of the journals doing what they're supposed to do the editorial content we just don't have great research going right now and this is the Cochrane review just to drive the point home these are this is a a very conventional group of phys of researchers worldwide who for each review they bring together experts in a field and they review all the data all the scientific evidence available on any given topic and so they did a review on the efficacy or how well the flu vaccination works and so their conclusion was actually that um, the, the, uh, the evidence has been manipulated by industry and so it's very hard to actually tell what the studies say but if you tease out as much info as you can what you find is that it will prevent uh, the flu about 1% of the time. 1% of the time. Meaning that you will need to vaccinate 100 people for one of them to have a... Um, a non-flu season. A non-flu. And the way that it gets, you know, so here's this hospital mandating all of their employees get the shot for that benefit. You would assume with that much pressure on an individual that it was 100% effective. Um, you know, a 99% failure rate is not a very effective, not a very effective way rate. of dealing with an illness. And they go on in their review to show that the people that have gotten the vaccination do not experience less complications when they get the right. flu. They spend just as much time in the hospital as unvaccinated people do. Um, essentially, there's no difference between vaccinated and unvaccinated people. Um, the only possible difference is that instead of four out of a hundred people getting four out of a hundred unvaccinated people will get, get the, the flu. flu with a vaccination uh, one out of one 100. out of a hundred and that is they did differentiate between a well-matched vaccine and a not so well matched right. vaccine right we've got three viruses in the vaccine every year and they're trying to predict as best as they can with the science available what strains are in there this year we've got the h1n1 2009 virus uh formerly known as swine flu or h1n1 um we have a uh, influenza type a it's h2n3 and we have a uh, influenza type b um, currently in australia i just looked at the the data as of september 28th 2010 um, they had more cases were the h1n1 2009 variety um, they've had a later start to their flu season down there, and really we should look to the southern hemisphere as far as how severe it is.